Hey guys, so we're here for another episode uh, just to kind of prep you for your uh, simulations that we're going to be doing. And this one is about ectopic pregnancy. What we're going to do first is just have a, a little think about what ectopic pregnancy is. And then we're going to go into the features and assessment of that, have a look at some management strategies and try and tie it up all at the end. So ectopic pregnancy is when you have a fertilized ovum that is actually resting anywhere else except from the endometrium. And most commonly, this is in the fallopian tubes, in, in the ampulla. The ovum, unfortunately, continues to expand as though it's a, a normal pregnancy within um, that area. So, for example, within the fallopian tube and, and actually can cause fallopian tube to rupture. And what, this, what happens with that is that then you get a uh, major hemorrhage. risk factors for this what why might this happen um, and these are really classic signs and symptoms and, and historical factors that we tend to ask pa uh, patients particularly if we're getting a patient who's in the first trimester of their pregnancy um, and they're coming in with uh, some random abdominal pain and these are the things we really, really need to think about so um, smoking of course is essentially a risk factor for everything apart from ulcerative colitis pelvic inflammatory disease uh, so so previous and ongoing in vitro fertilization and um, thinking about that uh, if the patient has a, a current IUD and then they've managed to get pregnant that is a risk factor and of course um, just like everything if you've had a previous ectopic you are more likely to to have an ectopic and then if you've had any gynecological surgery in the past or have any sort of abnormal uh, anatomy um, so it's a quite a lot of risk factors there um, something to be considerate of, particularly, as I say, in that sort of non-specific abdominal pain, but pregnant patient. But essentially, first trimester abdominal pain, we really need to start worrying. So what are those features um, of presentation for an ectopic? Yeah, great. So the, the main features that we, we often see are, are pain. So sort of super pubic or, or pelvic pain is, is quite a common feature. PV bleeding it is something that's always quoted, although that's not always present. And it, a lot of the time can be either very subtle. So you might patients might describe some spotting um, or it might be not present at all. And actually you can just bleed internally without having any evidence of, of, of bleeding uh, per vaginally. And the other patient group to be aware of is, is the patients who these sort of young females, females of, of childbearing age who suddenly collapse or are very hypotensive. That's often a very subtle and very concerning presentation of an ectopic pregnancy where essentially they've had that major hemorrhage from the rupture and they have therefore no blood pressure left and, and end up just collapsing. It's always important when when you're assessing a, a young female, as I said, a, a patient of childbearing age who presents with abdominal pain or presents with PV bleeding, always do a pregnancy test because um, you don't want to miss an ectopic pregnancy. And I think really just just even moving that because this is something that I had to cognitively force with myself before. A lot of patients will adamantly say that they are not pregnant. They know how they feel when they're pregnant. They've got IUDs in place, which are really significant um, contraceptives. Mm -hmm. They do double contraceptive, they're not currently having sex, all of these uh, things. And there's a balance to be struck here, I think, between, between not offending the patient by essentially ignoring them and making sure that the patient's safe, because there are a lot of patients that I've done um, you know, previously uh, where actually they, they think their risk of pregnancy is super low and then they, they come back with a positive pregnancy test. Mm. It's really important. It's one of the can't miss things. I mean, we talk about sending people to CT when you haven't done a BM and it turns out that they're hypoglycemic. Well, this is one of those situations where you could discharge that patient with lower abdominal pain. It could be an ectopic if you haven't done a, um, a um, pregnancy test. So it's really, really important. It's almost mandatory, really. Mm, absolutely. It's, it's one of those, it is, as you said, it's, it's people who say, oh, no, I can't get pregnant. It is a, you know, the, the classic thing. No, I've, I've had some surgery. I can't get pregnant. You know, even if there are none, if they're of childbearing age, have a pregnancy test. It's quick, simple, straightforward. That's always what I say when I see patients that, you know, even if you're a nun, we're going to do this, this pregnancy test. It just sort of takes out, you know, some of, some of that awkwardness. Yeah, it gives, yeah, it gives a bit of context as to how serious you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of when you're assessing these patients, as ever, we're going to advocate an A to E approach. 
going to be particularly interested in in the circulation again just as we mentioned those that heavy bleeding that can occur can cause patients to be hypotensive which is a, a bad prognostic sign um, so make sure they've got adequate intravenous access make sure you're taking off some blood tests including a group and save and make sure you're replacing blood with blood as we've mentioned before on previous podcasts and then moving on to sort of more of a, a management component the, the key really is that cardiovascular stability so if they're if they're unstable in many ways it's it's, it's a relatively straightforward mm. management process even though it might be you know, technically difficult to achieve and, and these patients are unwell it is it is the theory anyway is quite straightforward they need to be resuscitated with blood products and you need to speak to your ops and gynae team and they need to get to theatre uh, relatively quickly to to remove the atopic pregnancy and repair whatever damage that's done so they might need to take out the fallopian tubes they might need to do a salpingectomy or a, salp a salpingotomy um, and sometimes they might need to do a little bit more and take out parts of the the, the uterus itself if they're hemodynamically stable, this might be something you can manage as an outpatient. So here you're going to be discharging them with adequate pain relief, booking a transvaginal ultrasound to see where the, the pregnancy is um, and checking serial uh, HCGs. Uh, with the HCG, you're expecting the level to double every 48 hours in a normal pregnancy and it will decline in an ectopic pregnancy or a miscarriage. Medical management, we can give medications. So we use methotrexate, which is used to essentially terminate the pregnancy. Um, NICE have a good set of criteria that you can use methotrexate for. And that's if the ectopic is not ruptured, which you need the ultrasound to, to show. There's no significant abdominal pain or no significant pain. They're hemodynamically stable. They have a, a beta HCG less than 1500 and they have no interuterine pregnancy uh, or adenexal mass on the ultrasound. So, so one thing that comes up, Matt, a lot in these simulations is uh, the patient that comes in, and, and particularly for our simulation, the patient comes in, they, they have significant symptoms and they are found to be pregnant, but the patient was unaware of being pregnant. And this is something that can happen, you know, quite frequently, actually, because it's in the first trimester. Mm. Um, and it's about how to have that conversation. And I think what would be really sort of useful task to go and, way have, and have a think about is how to break the news that you are, that, that, that this patient is in fact um, or was technically pregnant. Um, and it's uh, because this is one of those things that you can really mess up from a communication perspective if you're sort of there at the front line and, so, and, and you, you're having to deal with this patient and you haven't had any thought towards it. So using different terminology for different patients is, is really um, is a necessity. I don't know how, how, how sort of you do this, Matt, but, but I think it's quite um, difficult to do this in a short way. And actually, you need to kind of give quite a bit of context surrounding this. So quite often what I will do is I will say something like, you come in to us with, with abdominal pain and, and, and some bleeding. Based on the fact that you are of childbearing age, one of the things that we need to rule out is whether or not there has been a pregnancy and this could be causing these symptoms. Now that this is a, a, a process that we have to go through and this is part of our sort of testing and screening process and we've done this and, and it has found that that you've got a positive pregnancy test but um, the issue that we now have is with these symptoms at the moment it might be that actually that that pregnancy is implanted somewhere outside of where it should be and therefore is not, not a viable pregnancy. And, and using those, that sort of terminology um, is better than saying, you know, you, we, we've heard some awful ones in simulation where oh, yeah. you were pregnant and now you are not. The baby, <laughs> the baby has died. All of these things are really traumatic on top of the fact that they're probably in quite significant pain and they're... Um, and, and they're bleeding and that what I just said there's not a perfect way of doing it but trying to use your communication skills to um to sort of alleviate the fears whilst also um letting them know about how um the, the possibility that this could be a pregnancy that is that is now an ectopic is really important mm. I completely agree and I think it, it's that that lack of emotive use of language you you, you know you used you, you talked about it there quite well and actually when when we have students who say the ba baby's a very emotive word Mm. And, and actually with ectopics this this is the pregnancy that is not viable this isn't going to produce a baby this is going to cause the female harm and will require either surgical or medical intervention to remove that fetus and i like i like using the word fetus it's very clinical often patients don't understand it so you need to make sure that they they understand you know that mm. word but yeah avoiding emotive words baby is the classic don't say baby ever 
because it's it, it's not and it's never going to be. Yeah, so and it's just about I think each uh, each time you have the conversation, you you build up ways of doing it, and also you adapt it and according to how your patient's presenting. Um, and, yeah. and so this will probably change each time you do it, and you won't be able to have a complete stop phrase, but it's just something definitely worth considering. So that, and so that's pretty much it in terms of ectopic pregnancy. It should be really, really high on your list of differentials in any female who's coming in and is of childbearing age and has lower abdominal pain. Don't forget to do that pregnancy test. And we talked about a bit of the um, surgical and or medical management. You're going to be getting your oxygen guiding team um, input um, to sort of guide you through this. Um, and just think about those communication strategies to the patient and um, to make sure that they have a really good and sort of patient-centered experience in what is quite a traumatic time if it is an ectopic pregnancy.